Hey there, folks. Welcome back to the garage. That's right. We're back for another maintenance video from yours truly, HET. So as we keep on going through various things on this car, uh, we're seeing more and more things, you know, that the previous owners kind of neglected, you know, to take care of, slash the car's getting old. Uh, so without further ado, uh, we're going to go through an in-detail uh, walkthrough of how to do valve cover gaskets. So this is a pretty common issue with these uh, older WRXs. Uh, as they get older, you know, around spark plugs and um, also just the valve cover gaskets themselves will uh, start to get old and uh, eventually start to leak oil, which is obviously bad. So stay tuned and I'll walk you through the process how to do this yourself and avoid uh, costly and very involved uh, trip to the dealership. Now, I promise you guys this is going to be an in-depth walkthrough, so just bear with me. But pretty much everything to start out with is the exact same thing as the procedure to take out the old spark plugs. So I'm basically what I'm going to do is skip ahead to the part where um, spark plugs are out of the uh, engine essentially. And then we'll pick up from there. Only differences from the procedure is that you're going to need to make sure that you drain the engine oil um and lift the car up so that you can get access to some of the bolts um from the underside of the engine so you see here i've got everything nicely jacked up uh and chalked up safely engine oil has been drained and then one thing that we do still need to do just go under the car and then take off this underbody panel so we'll have a whole bunch of these um, you know pop tab rib rivet things that we'll need to take off and those go pretty much around the whole front of the vehicle um, so again those are pretty easy you're just gonna stick a screwdriver underneath that little tab thing, pop that up, and then this thing should slide out. Uh, if you break a few, it's not a huge big deal. These things are pretty cheap. I'll put a link in this description to some extras if you need them. All right, so now I'm on the underside of the car with the underbody panel off. So we're gonna start with these three bolts on the driver's side. Got a 10 millimeter flex head gear wrench uh, let's see how this goes. All right. First bolt's broken. So you're going to kind of have to reach from like the back side of one of the subframe members. But the gear wrench will not fit from the front side, at least mine won't. Once you kind of have it part way out. Oh man. Uh. Can I even get my hand in there? Yep. And you can kind of start spinning it out by hand with much difficulty. There will be difficulty. This is not an easy job. Also, I'll help to spray a little bit of WD-40 or PB Blast or whatever your rust penetrant is of choice. There it goes. Now you may, yeah. Oh. I spoke too soon. There's the little sucker. Now, before you go any farther, it is a good idea to make a little diagram of your uh, bolt pattern because all of these bolts are different lengths and need to go in the exact same spot from where they came from. 
Uh, so on my diagram here, you know, I punched a bunch of holes. You know, each cover is going to have, you know, eight bolts. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is the driver's side. That's the, where the front of the engine is going to be. Flip it over. There's the passenger side. So I'll, when I put all these bolts back in, I'll know exactly where they go. All right, now that we got that corner bolt out, these other bolts should be much, much, much easier. All right, so starting with this guy, the bottom center. Beautiful. We'll go ahead and crack this guy up. We're gonna need the wrench. But that's okay. Again, make sure to remember where exactly you're taking out all these these bolts. So that anytime you feel this one of these bolts hanging up, make sure to hit it with some rust penetrant. Don't just keep wrenching. They're kind of thin and they have a tendency to break off. And breaking these off and the siller head and dirt head is no bueno. Alright, and now the sky is out. So again, this is our bottom center. Alright, so now we're moving over to the top side of the engine. So to do this, uh, since we're up here, we're going to take off these vacuum hoses. So we're just going to reach in there and then just kind of wiggle them off. Alright, there's one. Be patient with it. Eventually, it'll come off. There we go. Okay. And once those are off, getting to all the bolts is fairly simple. So just put our gear wrench back there. Find the bolt. All right, so just because the access is easier doesn't necessarily mean it's easy. So again, you may have to wrench on that thing for a while. So 10 millimeter flex head gear wrench is going to be your friend. But then once you can get to the point where you can unthread it by hand, she'll pop out. Beautiful. So now the other tricky bolt is going to be that top right corner uh, so again we're going to use a flex head uh, gear wrench I think it cracked it and that guy is just really buried in there with that air pump and all those wire harnesses unfortunately they didn't make it that easy to get this stuff out of the way and you can thread, unthread it by hand. Ouch. Alright, and then for the rest of these guys, we're just going to use a 10 millimeter socket and ratchet. Break this guy. that seal already breaking oh, 
Um, I'll be right back and switch to a longer socket. We got a longer socket on there. Should allow us to get flush on that bolt. There she goes. So we're gonna unthread the rest of these by hand. Uh, we are gonna just leave that one top middle guy on there until we're ready to take this off. Um, but for now, we'll uh, switch over to the passenger side. So now you can see on the passenger side, everything is really nice and open. Uh, so there's going to be a couple of tricky bolts down on the bottom, uh, but they're not too bad. Um, so for uh, this guy, the middle guy, you're going to use a 10 millimeter socket. Just kind of wiggle that down there. Really not that bad at all. Okay. So he's broken loose. Now we're going to go for that guy on the uh, far bottom left. Use our gear wrench again. Kind of have to keep that wire out of the way. Got him. You guys saw that, right? And then, in order to get clearance, we're also going to need to use this uh, gear wrench over here on the bottom right. Okay, perfect. Then I'll just unthread all these guys by hand. There's one. There's two. There's three. And the rest of those bolts you can take off with a ratchet easily enough. So now I'm just going to undo this hose clamp. Just kind of wiggle them up and over. There you go. There we go. Okay. All right, so we'll finish getting those bolts off. We'll probably clean them up a little bit with a little degreaser or brake clean. And then we'll get ready to take off these valve covers. Okay, so now we're at the passenger side valve cover with just the one uh, bolt keeping it on there. So then we're going to unthread this by hand. And then you may need to use a pry bar get this guy loose just be gentle with it there it goes then we got our oil pan underneath to catch any drippings hear that already make sure that you get all of the gasket so there's the valve cover so you can see lots of um, Lots of like burnt on oil, 
Now hopefully this will get better as we kind of do progressive oil changes on this guy. Um, but looking into the spark plug seems all that is looking pretty darn dry so that's a good sign. Um, of course we got lots of oil up here. But overall this, this side is actually looking pretty, pretty clean with the exception of the bottom. So then once you have that valve cover out of there, you're just going to want to make sure you go through, um, check all of your areas that had um, sealant on it. Make sure you take all of that old sealant off. All of this is coming off pretty easy. Uh, if you do, for whatever reason, have a stubborn spot, you can use a... Uh, Razor blade, just be very careful not to scratch the uh, the surface. Make sure you're going parallel to that seal. Uh, well, of course, we'll want to go through um, with a rag and some brake clean. Um, just to get, especially at the bottom there, make sure that every, all the oil is off. Oh, Got this half moon on here. There's one. There we go. So over here on the driver's side, we got the same deal. So we're going to pull out our last bolt here. A bit rusty. Gonna work on prying off this guy. He's already a little loose. Get this tube out of the way. Let some of that residual oil drain out. We're getting hung up on something here. Alright, we'll see if we can wiggle this guy out. Otherwise, we might have to uh, start looking at removing some other brackets. So we got a slight complication with the uh, 06 model Subaru. So if you guys have, you know, bug eye, blob eye, you guys won't have to deal with this. Uh, but th for those of us with the hawk eyes, we're going to have to take off these two bolts here and then one more bolt way down there to get this bracket loose uh, so that the valve cover can clear the frame. So we got some more 10 millimeter bolts. cheating a little bit long extension Oh, didn't drop that guy. And now we can get some clearance to get our valve cover out. All right, so it took a lot of wiggling around and struggling. Um, but after removing that bracket, I was able to move it up enough where I was able to wiggle this guy out. Um, so sorry I didn't catch it on camera, but um, just kind of goes to show it's not easy, but can do it. Um, so like, you know, the last time on the passenger side, you're going to want to remove all the pieces of the old gasket. So it came off pretty easy. And you got the two 
we're on the spark plug holes. All right, so to clean these things, just gonna give them quick shots, break clean. Start taking a pick. Just start kind of working that stuff in there. So after doing a few rinse and repeats with some brake clean in your pick, you should start to see it improve a little bit. At that point, you can probably start to using uh, you know some dish soap. And then I use a, like an old toothbrush. Um, I don't like using anything with metal bristles on the inside um, of the t or the uh, valve cover. If you want to use it on the outside, that's fine. Um, but the main thing is you want to make sure that this uh, sealing surface is free of any imperfections. Um, you know, when you're eventually reinstalling this thing back onto the you know the block, uh, you're going to want to make sure that you know. This passage here for the gasket is clear uh, when you're putting that in. I'm gonna get it all set up. Okay, so now we got our valve covers all cleaned up, ready to put the new gaskets in. So first you gotta make sure that you have uh, the right gasket. So if you're getting these gasket sets, they're gonna come you know, with two different gaskets for the drivers and passenger side. Again, they are different. Um, so this is the correct one for this side and then you know the side with the um, You know the flange is going to be on the outside. So that's going to be the side that seals up against you know the cylinder head And then we just have to find out Where all these little things go I usually look for this little double bulge and then know that that's my corner You're gonna to wanna to make sure that that gasket is good in there. And then there's nothing in the groove that would hinder its path. That groove should be very clean. And then you should also get these um, you know, gaskets for the spark plug holes. Uh, these are interchangeable, so you don't really have to worry about, um, you know, mixing them up. Uh, just make sure you install them the right way. Uh, so if you look close, so you'll have these little tab things that kind of help hold these things in place. Um, so there's going to probably be some sort of flashlight mark or parting line. Uh, you want the parting line side on the top. But again, it's going to kind of, they're only going to really fit well one way. Uh, so it's pretty hard to screw that up. But yeah, so you're just going to line that up. And it should be a pretty tight fit. Which is good. Helps them not come out. And then you're just going to, yeah. Make sure that guy's nice and secure in there. All right, so we'll do the same exact thing for the passenger side, um, but let's go ahead and uh, install this into the car. All right, so now we're ready to start the installation process. We're gonna put our half moons back in, do that. We're gonna put on a little bead of ultra, ultra gray uh, gasket maker. So right there is probably about good enough. I'm using new ones just because I busted these out uh, when I was taking them out on this side. And we'll do the same for the top one. Alright, right there is probably about good.
You may need to wiggle these guys around before they get flush. But you don't want them in crooked. All right, next you're just gonna wanna get kind of a glob on your finger. And then just start kind of getting the thin. Thin itty bitty film on that ceiling surface. You don't need a whole lot. This is definitely one of those situations where less is more. But it's just a little something extra to make sure that everything seals right. And when you're doing this, you want to make sure that there isn't any oil or anything on the surfaces. You might need to get a rag and wipe it down if you feel something. Looks like there's a little bit of oil down there. All right, so let's go put this valve cover gasket on. And this smidge right there. All right, we're going in now. This thing in. So we've tacked it down in a few other areas. Right, prevent the gasket from coming loose. Okay, can you hold the gasket right there? All right, after much finagling, we have finally gotten the gasket in place. We believe the gasket hasn't come out. And so now we're gonna start putting in some of these bolts. Thank you, sir. You can move your hand now. Not quite yet. So just start threading in some by hand. So then you're just going to keep on wanting to put in some of these guys to hold it in place. And then you can torque them down later. Now, when you're tightening down these bolts, you're going to want to do it in a crisscross pattern. So I usually start with the top, then go to the bottom, and then go right, left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, top left. Um, order doesn't really matter, um, just as long as you're kind of, you know, doing that crisscross um, uh, pattern. Kind of like you do in church. Anyway, I also kind of do this in two stages. So the first stage is just to kind of get the rubber to kind of compress a little bit. Um, again, you're just trying to make sure that the, everything is aligned properly. And then I'll go over it once more just to give everything a final tighten. Um, you don't want to go too tight to, uh, you know, break the bolts because, again, these are some thinner bolts. If you go too hard, that can happen. Um, you know, just use your best judgment. <clears throat> 
and you'll probably be fine. Got bottom. Top. Right. Left. Chris. Cross. Apple. Sauce. All right, now we'll just go through all those bolts one more time in the same pattern, make sure they're tightened down for keeps. So we're back over here on the passenger side where everything is much more accessible. Just gonna make our lives a whole lot easier. So again, we're gonna install our half moons. You're not touching any of the cams. And then just like last time, we're gonna to wanna to put on a thin film, some ultra gray around that ceiling, sur all the ceiling surfaces. Nothing too heavy, just like your finger painting. Okay, now finally we're going to reinstall the valve cover and reseal this engine. So now you'll notice on the uh, 2006 and uh, 2007 models uh, that this does not have the separate um, gasket for, uh, let's see if I can get a better angle, for this top part here. So this is actually integrated into the valve cover. Uh, so if you have one of the older model Subarus, like, you know, 02 to 04, or really 05, I guess, you're going to have an extra gasket um, for the, these uh, places that where the tube's attached to. Um, but yeah, for the 2006 and 2007 models, you guys, you guys don't need to worry about that. Um, but if you do, I'll have a link. Uh, to that gasket in the description. It was actually a little harder to find than I, than I thought it would be. But just a little heads up on those slight model year differences. Okay, so to not screw up our gasket here, we're going to attempt to go in as smooth as possible. Okay, so now we're going to start reinstalling some of our bolts by hand. See how much easier this is on the passenger side? Don't have all those tubes and wires and crap to worry about. It's our carbo trick, we know where all our bolts are coming from. Everything's just going right where it should go. Doing some finger gymnastics to get this guy starting to thread in. All right, I think all those guys are basically in there. So we're just gonna do the same kind of tightening procedure uh, that we did on the driver's side. Just go up, down, left, right, crisscross applesauce. Um, yeah, and then this thing will be sealed. Excited. All 
All right. So now with all of our bolts tightened up, uh, this thing is officially sealed. So now we can start, you know, reconnecting all of our hoses, uh, various, you know, connectors, brackets, all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, but aside from that one bracket that we disconnected to get clearance on the driver's side, uh, everything is going to be the same thing um, as putting stuff back together for the, for the, val or for the, sorry, for the spark plugs. So if you need to, you know, see any footage on how to put that, everything else back together, um, I'll let you go watch that video. Um, but yeah, otherwise, you know, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a like if it helps you at all. Uh, if you know of a better way to do any of the things that I did, uh, I'm sure that there are better ways. You know, let everybody know in the comments. Don't keep it to yourself. Also, be sure to check out the other videos on my channel. Like those if they help you in any way. As always, I'll have links to all the products I used, you know, parts, tools, equipment, uh, cameras, etc. All linked down in the description below. Uh, and with that, I hope you have a great uh, day and uh, keep on wrenching.